friends, welcome back. If you're new here, hello, my name is Kate. I'm a busy foster mama and here on this channel we talk about everything mom life, foster care and adoption. We also do family vlogs and living an intentional life and creating an impact. So if any of that interests you, I would love to have you subscribe down below and click the little bell for notifications so you don't miss a video. So you'll see I talk a lot about foster care <laughs> and if you have any other questions or topics you want me to cover, then, oh, hello, Mika. My puppy wants to say hi. Say hi, oh, good puppy. If you have any other questions or topics you want me to cover about foster care, I would be happy to. Just leave them in the comments down below. I'm going to start a new series, and this is just kind of, I've had some major changes in my life, and I feel like as a mom, if I'm going through these things that maybe some others are, and maybe what I can share with you will be helpful to you. So let's get right into it. So this all kind of starts back after having my second child and I'm going to do another video on that because if I start talking about that now it's it's going to be a long enough video as it is. It kind of needs its whole, whole own video. I had some negatives in my life. I was dealing with a lot of struggles and I was turning 30 and I just kind of had this feeling of change and something was going to happen or something was going to change. And I think turning 30 you just have a lot. I mean, maybe this is a different age for you, but for me it was 30 and who I am, who am I? What do I want out of this life? Am I living to my highest potential? You know, I felt like I kind of got lost a little bit in motherhood and you know, who am I as an individual? I I was pretty grounded in who I was as a mother at that point, but who I, who am I as an individual and you know, I think this happens to a lot of moms. We just get so super focused on our kids and we want to do everything for our kids and we want to teach them and be with them as much as possible and really like live life for them and we forget who we are. And I think can lead to a lot of negativity and struggles and it certainly did for me. You know, God really ch started changing some of my passions and what I used to be passionate about pre-kids and what I'm passionate about now. You know, He just really started to change things and things that I thought I would be involved with forever, like the beauty industry, for example. I loved that. I traveled a ton with it. I did a lot of really cool things, working backstage at shows, you know, helping out some really big hairdressers. I just, I loved it. And I thought for sure that would be my life. And I knew I wanted to be home when my kids were, uh, before they went to school, I knew that. But, there's bowling pins set up here for my kids. And the dog just knocked them over. But I knew, that I, I, I thought I knew I would want to go back to that and it's just really interesting because this is the first year both of my biological children are in school and it's like I don't want to go back to that. I still love having connections with my clients and that side of it but you know God's just really changed my passions, passion from that and the beauty industry to something and just gives my life a little bit more purpose and that is vulnerable children and trying to create awareness for foster care and you know, I'm just really passionate about being able to help kids like this. So I've always been a really positive, upbeat person. It's easy for me to find contentment. I'm not a complainer. I certainly try not to be a complainer. I mean, we all complain at some point. Nobody's perfect. But I found it easy for me to be positive and upbeat. And I just kind of found um, about this time last year that I just, I was kind of losing that. And I'm coming up on two years of fully staying at home. I always worked part-time but I've been almost home two years and I think a year into that I just kind of felt like okay what else you know I need to feel more fulfilled and I don't want you guys to take this the wrong way if you're a stay-at-home mom and you don't work in any way but for me I just I have a lot of creative energy that I needed to get fulfillment in other ways and I love being home with my kids and I made that decision to quit my job so I could be home with my kids and you know be there for school pickups and school drop-offs every day and be able to go on field trips and you know be able to pick them up for lunch and I just I really wanted that with my kids I really want to foster a close intentional relationship with them well that part of me there was no regrets there but I still felt like I had this kind of creative energy that wasn't being fueled anymore when you work in a salon full-time you're it's a bunch of creative people and bouncing off each other and you're dealing with clients and you're getting to share and connect and it's a really, I mean, if you work at a good salon, it's a really positive, upbeat environment. And I just found that I was missing that. Like I said, when I turned 30, this was last year, I'm 31 now, I just kind of had this year of growth and change and researching things and implementing new things into my life. During all of this, I kind of hit the highest weight of my life. And I'm sure as many of you can relate, when you are at a higher weight, you just don't feel like yourself. And you know, I had a lot of negative feelings in my head about myself because of that. And I just, I, I truly felt trapped in a body that wasn't mine. You guys know I'm on a recent 
weight loss journey. I am down 30 pounds in two months and I'm super excited about that and I've never been more motivated to keep going and you know I still have a long way to go but I, I stopped feeling guilty about taking that time. I just go twice a week. I leave early before bedtime. I leave my husband to put the kids to bed and I go to Zumba. It's a habit for me now. I've created that habit and I love it and I look forward to going and I feel good after I come home and I just had to stop feeling guilty about it. Let's get into that a little bit more after. I feel like this video is going to be a little bit all over the place, but it's just basically, I got lost in motherhood, I lost who I was, and this whole year has really been an amazing kind of self-discovery year for me, and just pushing myself into who I want to be in the future, and you know, listening to God, you guys know I'm a Christian, I totally believe that God is in complete control and He has control of my life. But he opens doors and he gives you choices. God isn't a God that just makes us live like robots. He gives us choices to do good, choices to do bad, choices to make the right decision or the wrong decision. And just really getting connected and in tune with that, that spiritual side of me, um, it just is just kind of propelling me forward into the future. And honestly, I've never been more excited about life and foster parenting has a big part of that and it's been a big reason why there's been so much change in my life and I just want to share that with you guys. So if you're feeling lost in motherhood, I certainly was. Give me six years, I really only identified as a mom and I totally lost who I was and it's taken me six years now to realize, you know, it's okay to take time for yourself and it's okay not to feel guilty when you want to go and do a couple workouts a week and it's okay if you need to pursue something else to to feel passionate and to feel creative and for me that's YouTube and my blog and I needed a way to channel that creative energy somewhere else and I love to create these videos and connect with you at the end of the day when you're a stay-at-home mom you miss that connection one-on-one -on -one with people and I you know YouTube is just a way for me to be creative I love editing the videos and I'm just learning technology is not something that comes easily and quickly to me I'm not naturally inclined at that I've always been very good with my hands as far as art and creating now, turning that into the computer world and the online world I've just I'm having a lot of fun with it but, you know, another thing, I was really caught up in consumerism and I found that I was just filling this void. There was this void in my life that I thought, if I buy more stuff, I'm going to be happy. And I just found myself more and more unhappy. And now I'm on this journey to minimalism and I've been decluttering and cleaning and getting rid of stuff left, right and center. And I've never felt like so empowered. And just to live more simply and live more minimally, I can't tell you guys what it's done for me. To sum this all up, I really lost myself in motherhood. I kind of got consumed in helping others and giving to others, completely forgetting about myself and to nurture and care for myself. And, you know, just filling that void with stuff. And I just found myself at a really unhappy stage. I've shared with you guys before, last year when we had the boys, it was a really hard foster placement for me. I struggled with feelings of depression and I just, I didn't like who I was and the thoughts that I was having and I just came to this realization then about a year ago that it's time to tar start taking care of yourself and I feel like as a Christian I'm very like, okay, die to self, live for others, die to self, live for others, that's what God tells us to do. But God also created you perfectly. I think this statistic is like one in 400,000. That's the chances that you are here living the life that you're living. And you were created for a purpose and I just, it took me kind of getting lost in motherhood and trying to refine myself to realize that, you know what, if I don't care for myself first, I can't care for others well. I'm going to start kind of harvesting these negative feelings and I need to take care of my mind, my body and my spirit. And, you know, coming to that realization has just been life changing for me and realizing I don't need stuff to make me happy. What's important to life is relationships, connections with people and helping others. And it's, you know, that old saying, it's better to give than to receive. Of course, I like getting gifts from my husband or from friends or whatever, but when you're able to give back to other people and see growth in other people's lives and see happiness in other people's lives, that is the true ultimate meaning of happiness. And I really can truly say I found that this year and just kind of living in a more intentional life and stop living reactively and start living proactively. And this is a journey, guys. This isn't like I'm gonna wake up one day and be like, okay, yeah, I'm gonna wake up at 5 a.m. My day is gonna be like this, da, 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 and I'm living a super proactive life. There's changes. I am not a morning person. I'm still a night owl to this day. I try to get up early before my kids because I see the value in that. But it's still, it's hard. It's a struggle for me. Every small change I can make is going to ultimately lead up to the greater good. So like I've already told you, I've started working out. I've started nourishing my body with proper foods. Yes, do I still have days where I want junk food and 
of course, and I still have cheat days, but every small decision leads up to the greater good. So I don't, I just want to encourage you if you guys are feeling stuck or if you're feeling unhappy or feeling you're dealing with negative thoughts, that if you take care of your mind, your body, and your spirit first, then your whole life is gonna be so much better. I can tell you guys this from experience. I just have this like inner peace now and this inner satisfaction. I've never been more excited about the future. I find it easy to be content even in hard times. And you know, before something difficult would happen to me, it was kind of like a pity party on me and why do I have to deal with this? And now I'm just, it's easier to see, okay, there's a greater good for this. I am very blessed to say I've had an easy life. The hardest thing I've ever had to deal with was a miscarriage and losing our first baby, and that devastated me and put me into a state of depression. And of course, I've had loss of grandparents, but I've never had any crazy losses that I'm sure some of you watching this may have. You might look at this and say, yeah, well, you haven't really been through anything, so it's easy for you to say, it's easy to be content in hard times. You really haven't been through anything. And you know what, maybe that's true and maybe my hard time is still coming and being a foster parent and having to say goodbye to so many children and having to see some of the things I see and and deal with some of the things I have to deal with, like because I've been able to take care of myself, it took me a year, my first year of foster parenting was very difficult for me emotionally and it's taken me the second year now to just be able to handle things a little bit differently and be able to kind of see the good in things and be able to be more positive. And the reason I'm sharing this with you is because I can say without a doubt that where I was a year ago is very different to where I am now today. And I want to share this because you can't underestimate the impact that sharing a story might have on somebody else's life. And if it can help just one of you, then I'm happy to share the story. And I know this video has been kind of rambly and up and down and all over because there's so much I want to say and I have so much excitement. But basically you need to take care of your mind, your body, your soul, live a life with intention, live a more proactive life, and you are going to find so much more happiness. So if you're struggling to find your happiness, to find your purpose, I hope that you continue on and watch this series and let me share with you kind of what I've been going through and changes that I've been implementing and hopefully it can help you. Anyways guys, thank you so much if you watched the end. Thank you so much for being here. Like this video if you like this kind of content. Share it. Subscribe if you're new here. I'd love to have you and I'll see you on the next one. Bye!